Welcome to Women Making a Difference, PJSAO Women Who Inspire and Motivate. Alana Gale, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, you're quite welcome. My pleasure to be here. You know, so often, um, Ms. Gale, people know who I am because I'm the elected state's attorney here in Prince George's County, um, but you are working really hard for our residents every single day, and you're doing such interesting work. And so I wanted uh, folks to get to know you a little bit better and the work that you do for our office. So why don't you tell uh, our audience about your role in the state's attorney's office? I'm currently the assistant state's attorney assigned to the problem solving courts in here in the circuit court. That's adult and juvenile drug courts, reentry court, and veterans court. And so, so talk about uh, the work that you do and how that differs from what traditionally people think of uh, the prosecutor's role. Well, what I do is really more alternative to sentencing. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to deal with the problem, the reason why someone may have offended. In most cases, we're dealing with drug offenders. Sometimes we're dealing with people who have mental health issues. But we try to work with the, the individuals so that they will not commit new crimes. And if, do you find that these, these problem-solving courts are effective? Do you find uh, that those who go through that process, uh, does it, is it helpful in terms of them reoffending? Do they not reoffend? Or do some of them reoffend? What, what do you think is the experience that we've seen uh, with respect to problem-solving courts? Most of them do not reoffend. Now, I don't have the exact figures, but I know that um, we have a very very good rate of keeping people from reoffending. And I think one of the things that the problem solving courts do is that they help people to better understand why it is that they got into the situation in the first place. Mm -hmm. why it is that they're using drugs and to help them if they have mental health issues, to help them to get to the root of their problem so that we, we deal with the actual cause so that they don't have a need to reoffend. So how does that work uh, make you feel? Like, I know that, you know, our office is, I mean, we're busy, and I know that you're busy in problem-solving court too, but the work that you're doing there, how does, that, how does that impact you personally? Well, it makes me feel great. And let me give you just a little bit about my background. I mean, I've been an attorney since 1986. So I've been around for a while, and I've been a prosecutor since 1996. And I have litigated, I have done, I've litigated drug cases, I've lit litigated homicide cases. So I know how that feels, but this feels different. This is an opportunity to not only uh, bring people to justice for what they've done, but also to help them again, as I said, so that they, they don't reoffend. So it's, it's great. I mean, it's a nice progression to have moved from the straight up litigation now to more of these alternative programs. So can you talk about any of the, not, not personal, not names, but any <laughs> of, the, of the, uh, the cases that uh, you've, you've been a part of, you, that you've handled, that you're, you're, you're most proud of or, or that sticks out to you? Well, you know, over the years, I've had so many in so many different roles. Um, but I think, you know, dealing with the problem-solving courts right now, I've had the opportunity really to see, like in, in juvenile drug court, we had a person who was not doing very well, wasn't paying attention to his parents, getting into trouble, who has totally turned themselves around. And to see that person become, oh, such a well-rounded adult, it, I mean, it's, it's a good feeling. And, and also with, yeah, it's just, it's just very good watching people come to better understand themselves right around and know that you're a part of that yes. uh, that, that, that because you've used your your discretion and your power to really empower that person uh, as opposed to just penalizing that person that you've changed their life or helped to yes. change their life and, yes. that, and that that's that must be rewarding 
you know, you don't do this work alone. So why don't you talk about some of the partnerships we have uh, in the courthouse that makes this all possible? Well, in uh, adult, um, adult drug court, we partner with primarily with the Department of Health. And we also partner with the Department of Corrections, uh, Division of Corrections. And juvenile drug court, we partner with Department of Juvenile Services. We have a very, very strong partnership with them. Reentry court is interesting in that we partner with about 12 different entities. So we, we partner with the Sheriff's Department, the Police Department, Corrections, Health Department, Parole and Probation, the Reentry Roundtable, Public Defender's Office. So, I mean, that we have a, a really big partnership, in, in addition to, of course, the Circuit Court. Right. And, it, and it's great to know, because I think oftentimes we do hear, especially about our, our law enforcement partners, like our police and sheriffs, you know, uh, really the, 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 the sort of the negative interactions with the public and, uh, and maybe people think, oh, all they want to do is have people locked up and, 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 and that, you know, people have lost some, some faith and trust in, in law enforcement, but to know that they have also uh, been a part of uh, re reentry and, um, you know, giving second chances and, and working with our problem solving courts. I think that's a side that um, folks don't actually get to see. Yes. Uh, and oftentimes it is those officers who are out on the streets who know even better than oftentimes we do uh, what that person's problem is because they're encountering them in their neighborhoods, in their homes. They may have uh, encountered them more than once. So um, they also have an interest uh, in seeing that person, uh, you know, do better and not reoffend. Uh, yes. So it's, it's great to know that uh, our partners in law enforcement are also a part of the problem solving court process. Yes. yes. Yeah, and I do definitely have to give a shout out to, to those officers who have approached ASAs and said, well, you know, this guy really has a drug problem. Mm -hmm. Is something that you can do. Right. Yes, they have done that. I have gotten those types of recommendations. So, yes. That that's, is that's, and that's good to know. Now, I, I know um, because you just have a wealth of knowledge and, and we <laughs> often call upon you. I know I do uh, <laughs> to be a part of meetings as we discuss, you know, um, really just reinventing in, in many cases how we do justice and, and what justice looks like and and having those really tough conversations because as prosecutors, you know, we do have a responsibility uh, for public safety. We have a responsibility to seek justice for our victims and our communities, and we do that. Um, but we also uh, have the responsibility uh, to make sure that everyone in the system is protected protected, and that justice is served. And justice isn't always about penalizing individuals right. who may have committed an, an offense. There's got to be this balancing act, right? Yes. So, so now that we are kind of looking at expanding back on track, we're looking at, you know, looking at expanding diversion opportunities, like what role or what is the most appropriate, most effective way for prosecutors to really have that conversation with the public, uh, with law enforcement partners? What, how do you think we should approach uh, you know, uh, reform in the justice system? Hmm. Well, that, that's a good question. That's, that's a big, because <laughs> everyone's, everyone's coming at it from different angles. Right. Um, I have looked at some articles about what uh, people are doing in Philadelphia, in the Bronx, uh, in Brooklyn, in their district attorney's offices, uh, where they're looking at the, how, how to sentence people. In addition to that, you know, there are a lot of prosecutors' offices that are looking at old convictions mm -hmm. to see whether or not people were convicted properly, um, and whether or not that those sentences are still proper and correct today. So there are so many different ways. And again, I think as a prosecutor, we need to look at justice for the whole community. You know, we're we're focused on the community as prosecutors, and sometimes what's best for the community is not locking somebody up. 
what's best is to actually see what the problem is with that individual so they can go back into the community as a healed person and really be a uh, you know, good, hardworking member of the community. Because we want more people out there who yes. can be good fathers, good mothers, good grandparents, and, and just good citizens. You know, uh, speaking of that, you know, you and I sat next to each other, um, I think it was maybe about a, a little over a year ago um, when we had uh, the first case. And I don't know if it was just in Prince George's County history, but but possibly even in this in, in the history of the state where the, the state proactively uh, supported uh, the resentencing of a juvenile life or a uh, two reentry court. And then eventually that person uh, was released, uh, is currently being monitored. Uh, I think that's for about a year, but, right. but uh, so far, you know, we believe that, you know, that th that individual will be successful. Uh, but how did that make you feel? knowing that this was the first time that at least in our courthouse uh, that 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 happened and that we were a part of that. It was great. It, it, was, it was wonderful. It was a good experience. And the thing is, I get to see this individual at least once a month, mm -hmm. sometimes more. And this individual is doing wonderful. I mean, he, he is going to make a real contribution to the community. So to have seen him while he was incarcerated and listened to what he said and why he believed that he was going to be a, an asset to the community and now seeing him out and seeing what an asset to the community he's becoming. All right, that, that's a great feeling. I mean, we never bring back the victim and we understand that. And, and you know, prosecutors were all for the victim, but to see how this person is really doing such a, I mean, he's really turned himself around and, and right. certainly could not have done that if, it, if he'd continued in jail. Sure, sure. And, and, and that is the balance that we have to strike um, because, uh, you know, we're looking now at, you know, our, at our juvenile lifers and I think just uh, the country is looking at them differently. Certainly the Supreme Court um, laid a foundation saying that life without the possibility of parole uh, is unjust uh, with respect to juveniles. And so that gave really uh, courts around the country uh, the ability to relook at um, sentences that were imposed on uh, individuals who were juveniles when they committed their crimes. Um, but it also gave uh, prosecutors an opportunity uh, to step up as well. And, you know, I've stepped up, you stepped up, our office is leading in the state in, in reviewing these cases and making appropriate recommendations, uh, keeping in mind that there are still next of kin out there. Uh, yes. and, and so we, of course, keep them informed. Um, some of them want to participate, some of them don't, you know, and, and we understand that. Um, but, it, it does take a lot of courage to do this work because it's not traditional work for prosecutors, but right. it's what the justice system now requires and we're going to meet that requirement. And it's great to have people uh, like you on this team who understand that, who you are courageous in the work that you do. You do think outside the box, um, but, it, but it is so rewarding. Uh, to, to, to not just say we believe in redemption, but also to, to, to really practice what we believe. Then, then if we believe that there's redemption and we see someone who's redeemed, what is our responsibility? Um, and so that, so it's just a great feeling to know that I have like-minded people in this office and with your level of experience, uh, and your standing in the community, uh, you're really a great messenger, uh, for, for the work that we're doing now. So, yeah, I know, absolutely. So, so before we leave, I wanna give you an opportunity to, to, to talk uh, to, to those out there who may be thinking about um, the law as a profession or who might be thinking about becoming prosecutors or, or maybe they're thinking, maybe they don't wanna be a prosecutor because they don't wanna lock people up. But, <laughs> but, but, but look, you, you've given them a different perspective. So what yeah. advice would you give people? What, what, what words of wisdom would you give anyone out there who might be considering the law? Well, certainly follow your dream. I mean, I went to law school late. I was 30. 
Um, <laughs> but, it was, <laughs> but it was something that I really, really wanted to do. Um, I did not want to go into litigation, but once I got into it, once I really saw what it was about, I love litigation. And I love being a prosecutor because my job is to do justice, mm -hmm. not to get anybody off. It's, it's to do justice. And so it's just such an important job. And yes, when I go home at night, I feel good because I believe that I have done things to help the community. And that's, to me, that's, that's what it's about. Absolutely. Well, I think that's the, the, the best way to end this uh, interview. Mm -hmm. And thank you so, so very much for the work that you always do for this office and will continue to do into the future. Until mm -hmm. next time, everyone, have a wonderful day. Thank you.